Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Welcome to St Thomas's online for a service of Holy Communion on this second Sunday of the Epiphany season. This is the month when we visit the Gospel passages that speak of Jesus revealed as the Christ, the one sent to save us. Christ is made manifest, shown forth, his identity made evident. The big three events of the season are the visit of the Magi, the baptism of Christ in the Jordan, and the wedding feast at Cana. Let's have an Epiphany hymn. Sages from afar, Jordan's stream, Cana. Today we have another Gospel reading that is full of meaning. It's towards the end of the first chapter of St John. This is how it begins. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. So Jesus calls Philip and Philip 
calls Nathaniel. That gives me the opportunity to call you, the worshipping congregation, to this service of word and sacrament in which we too encounter Jesus of Nazareth. As we do so, we give thanks for our fellowship in the Gospel and we share words of peace with one another. Our Saviour Christ is the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there shall be no end. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We bring to mind all those from whom we are separated, family, friends, church members, and in silence we commend them to God's safekeeping. Let's continue that Gospel reading. Summoned into the presence of Jesus, Nathaniel does not instantly grasp the significance of the moment. Nathaniel said to Philip, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Nathaniel meets Philip's invitation with a sardonic comment. That reminds me that we too often have cause to regret our actions and inactions and our part in a community of indifference. Let us come to the light of Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. God of mercy, we, we acknowledge, acknowledge that, that we, we are all sinners. sinners. We, we turn, turn from, from the wrong that, that we, we have, have thought and said and, said and done, and are, and are mindful, mindful of all that we have failed to do. For the, for the sake, sake of Jesus, Jesus who, who died for us, us. forgive us for all that is past, and, and help us to, to live each day in the light of Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive you your sins and make you holy to serve him in the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Nothing is impossible with the God we encounter in Jesus. Let's hear now what happens when Nathaniel engages with him. When Jesus saw Nathaniel coming towards him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathaniel asked him, where did you come to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. In a few words, Jesus leads Nathaniel from cynicism to faith. Here's today's collect, which speaks of the hope of divine transformation for us all. Almighty God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature 
by the riches of your grace and in the renewal of our lives make known your heavenly glory through jesus christ our lord amen, amen. line of today's gospel completes Jesus's words to Nathaniel. Very truly I tell you you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Jesus deliberately chooses to take us back to Genesis 27 and 28. You will recall that Isaac intended to bless his older son, Esau, but Jacob, his younger son, helped by his mother, Rebekah, tricked Isaac into giving him the blessing. Jacob is on the run from his brother and at Bethel, he sleeps and dreams, and in the dream he sees a ladder set on the earth but reaching to heaven, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon it. And he receives a promise from God that his descendants will prosper, as indeed they do. So that is Jacob's ladder. I like a, a ladder. I use one occasionally to clear gutters, or to enter the loft, or to do something in a tree. The point about ladders is that they are movable. You can put a ladder wherever you need to be a bit higher, and ladders are full of possibility. Even at six foot four, there's no way I can clean out the gutters or get up in the loft without a ladder. And the view is always exciting. Everything looks different. Sometimes you just have to stand on the rungs and enjoy the view. Jacob's ladder is a dream, and it is the dream of a fugitive. 
It may just be that to Jacob, heaven seemed as far off as that blocked gutter, high up on the side of the house. And when heaven is far off, it means that prayers go unanswered. In fact, maybe they don't even get heard. We all know that feeling, I'm sure. As the psalmist says, How long will you forget me, O Lord, forever? How long will you hide your face from me? Jacob dreams of the very thing to bring together heaven up there and earth down here. A ladder. And not just an empty ladder ready for use, but a ladder busy with angels coming and going. Angels are messengers. Perhaps we can see them carrying prayers up to heaven, carrying words of guidance down to earth. His yearning for connection has been answered. The ladder opens the way for words to flow between heaven and earth, earth and heaven. This is a full and open relationship between the people and their God. This is the bib biblical image and it is a strong one. Perhaps we could say that the whole history of Israel is about that ladder. Sometimes the people forget to put it up, not aspiring to lift their eyes above ground level. Sometimes they fail to put the ladder up properly. It's too short or it slips or the rungs break. And sometimes the ladder is just right and all the possibilities of the right relationship with God are enabled. Jesus is faced with Nathaniel, whose initial cynicism has given way to an acknowledgement that Jesus is the Son of God. And in return, Jesus uses that same powerful image from Genesis. But there are differences. First, unlike Jacob, this image of the opening of heaven is not a dream. You will see, says Jesus, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending. Jesus offers the connection or relationship in all its reality. Heaven and earth rarely will be brought together on that day. And second and very importantly, that ladder has gone. There's no sense of us standing on the ground trying to direct the unwieldy thing to the right place. No, for Jesus himself is the one upon whom the angels of God will do their ascending and descending. Jesus, with typical boldness, shows Nathaniel that now he, Jesus, takes the place of the ladder. That means to know Jesus, to accept Jesus as Lord, to answer Jesus' call, is to see heaven opened. And there are the angels scurrying back and forth, delivering their messages. It's picture language, of course, but its promise is real. In a time of widespread and unexpected suffering, no one is suggesting that all prayers are answered as we wish and that everything in the garden becomes rosy. Clearly we pray on and sometimes, or often, our prayers will feel like R.S. Thomas's gravel thrown up at the window to no avail. Lament and sorrow are a part of life's journey as much as celebration and joy. Faith in Jesus gives us the assurance in all things and at all times 
that the veil of heaven is gone. We don't stand on earth looking helplessly up to the heights. In Jesus, we have that relationship of trust and confidence that enables us to share our deepest yearnings and our most heartfelt prayers. Alert to the presence of God's angels, we pray, we watch, and wait. And as Jesus taught us, we serve as God gives us the means. As we turn to prayer, let us voice our cares and concerns, knowing that God is listening to us. Lord God, make yourself known to all those watching this service and those who pass by our building, but who are not able to come in. Even in these restricted times, make us better bearers of your life to those who need you, but have never met you. Lord God, the world lurches from crisis to crisis and there is misleading and misunderstanding. Help us recover the natural sense of what is right and just, honest and good, so that our hearts are inclined to hear the voice of your leading and respond to it. Lord God, help us to take more seriously our responsibility of helping one another forward in our faith. As brothers and sisters, we pray for those in our own families whom we would love to bring to know you, and for those who have drifted away. God, we know that there are many who are finding this time of pandemic very distressing, painful and worrying. We stand alongside them now and ask for them your comfort, reassurance, healing and peace of mind. We remember all key workers and pray that they will have the strength to keep going and the support they need to carry on. Lord God, even as we pray now, there are those who are journeying through death. We pray for them and for all who have recently died, remembering Jean Fryer, Rosemary McNeeny, Kathleen Birch and Arthur Bowden. We pray for all those left without their loved ones who are grieving or numbed with shock. Lord God, we thank you 
for all those who have directed us to know you better and for the way you are drawing us closer into friendship with you. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. All honour and praise be yours always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever-living God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. For at this time we celebrate your glory made present in our midst. In the coming of the Magi, the King of all the world was revealed to the nations. In the waters of baptism, Jesus was revealed as the Christ, the Saviour sent to redeem us. In the water made wine, the new creation was revealed at the wedding feast. Poverty was turned to riches, sorrow into joy. Therefore, with all the angels of heaven 
we lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name and sing our joyful hymn of praise. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with Mary, and Philip, Andrew, and Bartholomew, Thomas Beckett, and Edmund, and all the saints, to feast at your table in heaven, through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done, done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, bread and forgive us our trespasses. trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. I now receive the consecrated elements on behalf of all who are worshipping together this day.
Together we join in the words of the post-communion prayer. God of glory, you You nourish nourish us with with your your word, who who is is the bread bread of life. Fill Fill us with with your Holy Spirit, Spirit, that through us the light light of your glory may shine in all the world. We ask ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord. Amen. Now some notices for today. The suspension of public worship at St Thomas's is of course open-ended. The safety of our congregations and the wider community must come first. We will continue to open for funerals, however. That leads me to ask your prayers of thanksgiving for the life of Kathleen Birch, who has died just a few months after Morris. Both were active members of St Thomas's and indeed of the Scout Movement for many years. Please pray too for their family. Next week's online service will be an act of worship for the third Sunday of Epiphany, and then on the last day of the month there will be an online civic service to mark Charter Day for the city of Salisbury. Now, even in the most testing of times, we commit to marching, living and moving in the light, love and power of God. We are marching in the light 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 of God. We are marching, we are marching, marching, we are marching, marching, we are marching in the light of God. Heaven is opened, and in Jesus, God's will is made known, and our prayers ascend. The servant king calls us to follow him. Before the blessing, we are going to be reminded that God keeps on calling, as we hear that great story from the first book of Samuel. Meanwhile, The boy Samuel served the Lord by assisting Eli. Now in those days, messages from the Lord were quite rare and visions were quite uncommon. One night, Eli, who was almost blind by now, had gone to bed. The lamp of God had not yet gone out and Samuel was sleeping in the tabernacle near the ark of God. 
Suddenly, the Lord called out, Samuel! Yes, what is it? He got up and ran to Eli. I didn't call you. Go back to sleep. So he did. Then the Lord called out again. Samuel. Again, Samuel got up and went to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? I didn't call you, my son. Go back to sleep. Samuel did not know the Lord because he had never had a message from the Lord before. So the Lord called a third time, and once more Samuel got up and went to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? Then Eli realised it was the Lord who was calling the boy. So he said to Samuel, Go and lie down again, and if someone calls you again, say to them, Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. So Samuel went back to bed. And the Lord came and as and called as before. Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel replied, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Christ, the Son of God, perfect in you the image of his glory and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.